Diet Coke and a chalice. Mm. What better way to start a story? What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy, and this is going to be story time. And today, I'm going to tell a story about my time as a bag boy. Uh, I was a bag boy at a, a wonderful store up in Northern California in Sacramento called Nugget Markets. Nugget Markets is like a kind of like, I want to say like high-end grocery store, but it's like in the middle of like normal, like Safeway grocery store and like super high-end. It's like in the middle there. But nonetheless, it's a little more higher and they, they only serve like prime meat. They don't serve anything below prime. So nonetheless, and, and Nugget Market is, is a really great place to work, a uh, really wonderful place. Uh, so much so that I, I don't, I haven't checked up on it in a couple of years, but when I was there, they were always on the Forbes top 100 places to work list. Um, and that list, by the way, is chosen by the employees of all those places. But nonetheless, it's a very good place to work and they're very proud of the fact that they are a very good place to work. So I started there when I was 16 I started there um, and I worked there for five years. I worked there all the way up to the week that I moved to LA. So I worked there from 16 through high school and then all the way up to when I came here. And I did a, a couple different jobs there, but I started off as a bag person, a, 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 what is called the courtesy clerk at Nugget Markets, but just a bag boy, a bag girl, whatever, you know. Um, bag stuff up, help people out to their cars, swept the aisles, you know, just normal stuff because that's the only job you can get there when you're 16. You can only be a courtesy clerk. You can't be anything else. So there is this thing every year called the bag off. The bag off is a competition between all the different stores. At that point, there were six stores. Yeah, I think it was six. And what the bag off was is each store took two their two best baggers and all the baggers would have to compete to see who's the best who could bag the fastest and then there was a big competition where two people from each of the six stores they would all compete on a big stage bagging groceries and whoever could bag the best and the fastest won you won like 500 bucks and then you got to go on to like the uh, I think the regional championship, which is other stores in the area, different um, chains like Rayleigh's or, you know, Ralph's or whatever it is, um, their best. And then you compete there and then you can go to like the, the state championship. And there's even like a national championship that happens in D.C. every year, which is super weird. <laughs> But our store took the bag off very, very seriously. Most other stores in the region, the Sacramento region, didn't. Like, they may send, like, one person. They just kind of like, hey, you're good at bagging. You go. That's it. For us, it was not that way. For us, it was a massive, massive event. It was just insane. It was talked about and trained for for months. And all, like, the store directors would, like, talk crap to each other and stuff about, like, our bag is better than yours. And, like, oh, yours can do this. Well, mine can do this. And just this, this whole thing... Um, and, and, and you're kind of like, why is this a big deal? Like, why would they do this? And why would they take this so seriously? And the way they always put it, and this is actually kind of nice, is because, like, as a courtesy clerk, you are the bottom of the totem pole. Like, the complete bottom. Usually, it's people under 18, because that's the only thing you can do if you're under 18. And then you're just, you're the you're the bag person. Like, you're the bottom of the totem pole. Like, you do all the scut work, and you, know, you just, like, it's just, it's the, you know, it's the lowest paying, worst job there. It's just how it is. And that's totally fine, because, you know, I was 16. Like, you know, you don't get better jobs when you're 16 you do crappy jobs like you're you honestly should be forced to do crappy jobs when you're 16 because it makes you appreciate better jobs so this was their way of like giving back to the people at the bottom you know that was their way of doing it so they made it a really big event essentially as like a thank you to the people that like in like most jobs the people who are like the bottom of the totem pole are the place that really make the place run and that was no different there and this was their way of saying thank you essentially so that was very very cool so a little history with the bag off in my specific store we were the west sack store which is store six now we weren't the six store made there's six twelve thirty two i don't know what the numbers meant but we were store six and so store six um had a very storied history of being terrible at the bag off like really really bad like i think the last three years in the bag off the two people from store six who went to the finals um came in last second to last and and there it's it's a big big event and all the stores everyone goes if you're not working you're at the bag off and there's costumes and parades and all this stuff and i mean the 50 60 people from each store would show out and then like literally like like seven eight ten people from store six would show up like it was just we were not a spiritual store <laughs> spiritual we were not like a very spirit like team spirit kind of store we just weren't it just wasn't what it was and so we had gotten a new director this wonderful man named dan a new store director and he was like we are taking the bag off seriously. We are not doing this crap anymore. 
you know, it was like, we're taking it seriously, da, da, da. And I was there and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm a pretty fast bagger. I, I, I pride myself on being good at bagging and being able to bag well. And so I was like, you know, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to enter the competition. So the way it goes is again, there's two people from each store and there's a schematic of everyone has the exact same like 30 items or whatever that they have to bag. And there's a big spreadsheet that's on the check stand where everything goes and everything goes in the exact same spot for everyone. So everyone's on the same playing field. Nothing ever changes. It's the exact same bags and everything's in the same spot. So how it goes is you're going to have a paper round and then if you advance past the paper round, you go to the plastic round. So the paper round and plastic, you're each gonna have three bags. You have to fit everything into three bags. They have to be um, symmetrical in terms of like, the, you need them all to be the same weight. So you want them to be as, as close in weight as humanly possible. You get judged on that. And they also judge on the structural integrity of the bag. So if you're a bagger, you know that if you get like cereal boxes or any kind of square boxes, you put those in the corner like this, and then you tend to put cans or something like that, something hard and heavy in the middle, and then you stack things on top of that, and then you put perishable or crushables like bread or eggs or something like that on top so it doesn't get crushed there's a there's a specific way you're supposed to be bagging um and so this was that you had to put things in the right space you had to make them all the same weight and you had to make sure that any crushables did not get crushed they were all um in the right spot essentially so we would just train and you know we had one lead person uh she was a checker her name was tiffany and she was like she constructed the bags herself and like knew what she was doing and like and then all the courtesy clerks would more or less just train on this and some took it more seriously than others i took it very very seriously and i got really really good at it like really good at making these bags to the point where i even changed up the whole thing i was like no i'm gonna reconfigure my own bags i got them basically where they're all within a couple ounces of each other they're very very close in terms of weight um, just crushing it. And I started getting really, really good at it. So then there was, uh, the, the store competition where we like shut down the store for like an afternoon or whatever. And then all the courtesy clerks from that one store would then all compete. And then the top two people would then be the two people going. And then there'd be a couple more months of them practicing. And then the big bag off event where all the stores would compete. So we did that and I crushed, I mean, I was like, probably 10 seconds faster than everyone else because I had been really practicing. <laughs> and so I, I got in first in our store and then I honestly cannot remember who else got chosen from our store. But there's two of us and then it was on to um, practicing. And I got, because I was really taking this seriously and, and our new store director, Dan, was very serious about like, we're gonna show up at the bag off this year. Everyone's gonna be there. We're gonna have dope costumes. We're not going to be the laughing stock of the bag off anymore. He's very, very serious about it. So he was like super pumped that one, he had one of the fastest baggers in the company. And then also that I was taking it very, very seriously. So he then in my schedule for the day, like I'd be working like eight hours on like Friday or eight hours on Saturday or whatever. Every day in my schedule, he would set aside time for me to practice. And it'd be like two hours a shift where I would just take one of the check stands at the very, very end that never gets used. And I would just practice for like two hours every shift. And I worked there full time while I was in school. So I would just, I would just practice like 10 hours a week and just I'm the same bag over and over and over and over. And I eventually got so good that I could bag these three bags. And I think I did it sighted. I did it in 26 seconds, which is like blisteringly fast. And I say sighted because I eventually got so good at it that I started doing it blindfolded. I mostly just did it for like cool points. Like I was just like, so I would literally bring a bandana, tie it around my head, and then I could still do the entire thing because the muscle memory was so much there that I just knew where everything was. I knew exactly where I went to the bag. And so I pulled the bag, put it out, boom, 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 boom put down, pull up another back, boom, 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 put it like that. And I do it all blindfolded. And I did it one time in 31 seconds blindfolded. <laughs> and that became this huge deal because like, because again, like the, the store directors are constantly talking shit to each other about the, like, oh, my bag is the best. Da, da, da. Just, I mean, it's again, it's a very big event. And so the fact the, 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 fact that I was starting to do it blindfolded. And at that point I was doing it blindfolded faster than everyone else could do it sighted. Um, like S Dan, the store director started spreading it like crazy. So then like people were coming up and like, I hear you have a person who, who does it blindfolded in like 30 seconds. Are you serious? And it was like this whole big thing. And then we had like the prelims. Now the prelims are essentially just the two baggers from each store at their own store, just, 
uh, essentially, it's just to uh, make rankings, essentially. So you just do the normal bagging like you do, and then they time it with like an official timer. And it's essentially just to show like what stores are where, who's all where, and establish ranking. I honestly think just those store directors can talk more crap to each other. And I had the fastest time by like a insane margin. Like I was, I was the, the front runner going in. Now you can understand that since I'm talking about this in this way, that like it didn't all go well. <laughs> like I'm not saying like, y'all the best bag that's ever existed. Now, cause it didn't all go that well, but nonetheless, that's the whole build up to the bag off. Now we get to the actual bag off. Now, again, this is a very, very big event. They probably spent, they rent out this giant warehouse, build this big stage, lights, everything. I mean, they probably spend, I, I don't know if they still even do it. I'm not even sure they do because it's been a long time, but I mean, it was probably at least 10 grand, probably maybe 20. I mean, they spent a lot of money on this event. It's a very, very big deal. We get there and we, I can't remember, I think our, I can't remember what our theme was this year because each store has a different theme and they're all dressed up in costumes that theme. There's a parade. Every store has to have like a dance number they do. It's it's a whole thing. Um, and I, I remember the next year, after the year that I was in the bag off, because only in that one year, the next year ours was like 70 disco theme. And here are some pictures from it. There's some of my favorite pictures ever that you can kind of see how big of a deal this is. And this here is one of my favorite pictures of all time, just ever. It's me and one of my best friends to this day, Lauren. We went to high school together. We both worked at Nugget together. We've just been best friends forever. And it's just, I just, the, the you can see us grooving because this was in the middle of our, um, middle of our parade dance, middle of the whole thing. And uh, it was just so much fun. But nonetheless, that can kind of show you what it's like uh, at, the, at the bag off. It's a very, very big deal. So nonetheless, the year where I went, again, it was a much bigger turnout from our store. Still not nearly as big as a lot of other stores. But nonetheless, we, we finally redeemed ourselves in terms of like showing up for each other, I guess. Um, because again, in the years past, no one ever showed up. And so um, I went in the fa the favorite, honestly, and uh, I, I did not end the favorite, which is unfortunate. Sorry to, to um, you know, spoil it a little bit, but it's, it's a bit of a tragedy tale going on here. So we get to the bag off and then we do, you know, it's a big thing. We, there's a whole back green room for all the baggers in each store. And we're all in our, our normal nugget uniforms because it's got to be like official and stuff. So we get up there and there's, you know, there's lights and people on the mic and stuff like that and just music and blast and everyone's freaking out in the crowd. There's like a big mosh pit. It's like, you know, it's just insane. Just the most insane event ever because it's all about bagging groceries. But nonetheless, it comes my turn and we do the, the paper round. And then if you are one of the five or five, five or six people that went that are in the top five or six of the paper round, then you go on to the plastic round. I go out there bag it, crush it, go into the plastic round in first. So in between the paper and the plastic round was my downfall. And it wasn't my, it was my fault, but it, I got pressured into it. So in between the paper and the plastic round, cause you have to set up stuff differently for the check stands and stuff. They were like, let's have a dance off. <laughs> and so they were like, let's have like one person from each store go up on the stage and you're gonna dance and we're gonna have a dance off. And then like the winner's gonna get like a hundred bucks, you know, just like something random to fill the time and just keep the crowd super hyped for the final. So all these people get chosen. And at this point I was in the crowd with my store because they were setting up stuff. So they let us out of the green room and everyone's like, you gotta go, you gotta go, Nick. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna go. I have the bag in a few minutes because everyone knows how much I love to dance. Like I, I get down in the club, like get down. And they were like, you gotta go, you gotta go. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna go. Like I have the bag. Like I'm not gonna expel my energy while dancing. And like literally they would not they wouldn't let me not go because they knew that the best chance they, the store had of winning the dance off was for me to go up there. Not because I'm a good dancer, but just because like I dance like a madman. <laughs> and so, and so they wouldn't let me, they, they just kept bugging me, bugging me, bugging me, bugging me. And I kept being like, no, no, no. And they essentially guilt me into going out there. So finally I'm like, fine, I'll go up there and dance. And so I get up on the stage and here's the thing about me. I do not dance 75%. I am full clip. 150% every single time. I don't dance. I always go full bore, balls to the wall dancing. I can't not do it any other way. It's just not possible for me. So of course, when it gets to my turn to dance, 
I'm I'm up there and I'm going wild. I'm crumping. I'm just like just dancing my heart out. I mean, giving every ounce of energy, every ounce of passion I have is going to this dance routine because that's just how I do. Somehow I ended up on top of one of the check stands. I don't remember how or when. My shirt came off at one point. I don't remember taking it off, but it was gone at one point. So my shirt's off. I'm up on top of this check stand, crumping, dancing, crowds going wild. At one point, also, I grab like a water bottle and start pouring it on myself so I'm like I'm pouring water it is just ridiculous because <laughs> that's what I do like that I don't put me on a stage and have me start dancing it's a bad idea for everybody so nonetheless I get done dancing and I am like <gasps> I mean just every ounce of energy I have is gone and here's the thing and this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to do the dance off is because the dance off who wins the dance off is is done by crowd yelling so basically, whatever store has the most people is going to win because they're going to yell the loudest. And our store does not have the most people. So I also knew I wasn't going to win. And sure enough, I didn't win. I didn't even win the dance off. And so this whole thing happens. I end up not winning and I end up blowing out my whole gas tank. <laughs> and like, then I have to go back to the green room, put my shirt back on, tuck it back in because I'm a professional. And I have like, I'm literally like shaking because like, it's just like, you know, the adrenaline comes down and stuff like that. And just, I I'm so tired. And then a couple minutes go by and I have to go out for the plastic round. And the plastic round, I was actually faster in the plastic round than I was in the paper round. The plastic round was actually my like go-to round, which is great because it's the final. So like, if I am better in the final round than I am in the preliminary round, that's great for me. And I was pumped. I was like, I'm going to the, to the final first and I'm the best at plastic. I'm going to crush. I'm going to win this whole thing. I'm going to go to the national championship, win. I'm going to meet the president. It's going to be great. And that didn't happen. And so... It was just like Murphy's Law, man. Like every possible thing that could have gone wrong went wrong in the plastic round. It was, oh, it was heartbreaking. It was terrible. So basically, one, I'm just exhausted and just not nearly as quick and precise with my movements. Like the blindfolded Nick does not exist anymore because I just, I have, I'm all sluggish and crap because I have no energy. <laughs> and so just like, first things first, you open up the bag, you know, it's on a little thing. You open up the bag, grab two boxes, put them in there, boom. And then, you know, you create a little box for yourself and then you grab cans and put them in there. And so I, boom, going good, grab the stuff, come back and the boxes had fallen over. That has never really happened. Like that just never happened ever. So I went like, put those down, put them back up, went to grab them, came back and they'd fallen over again. And I'm literally like, what the hell is going on? Like this never happens to me. Like, well, and it was probably just because I was shaking. I wasn't, I was probably, when I was going back, I was probably like knocking them over or I just don't know. So I finally get, that bag done it takes me much longer than it usually does but like that's okay i had a, a super good first round we're probably fine so i go put it down i open the next bag put it in the two boxes they actually stand up no yeah they'd stand up this time and then i go grab a six pack of like coke um and i go and grab a six pack of coke now this is a rule they changed next year after this year and they changed it because of this this is a six pack of coke that has you know the ring the six pack ring on it and they never changed out the soda. So literally people have been grabbing it and yanking on it for like an hour or so. And the, the plastic rings that hold the cans in place have then stretched and worn out. So I go and grab it and pull it towards me and put it in the bag and two of the cans fly off. And one rolls on the check stand and then the other one falls on the ground and rolls almost off the stage. And so I have to grab this one and then run across the stage, grab that one, run back to my bag, put it back in there. And at that point, one of the boxes had fallen over again. So I had to put it back up, put that in there. And then I, I end up getting to the plastic round, but it was, I mean, in terms of the plastic round itself, I probably came one of the last, like one of the last um, places. It was terrible, terrible. My worst performance ever. Just, oh, it was just so saddening. Now my paper round was good enough because you combine the two scores and that's your score. I ended up coming in third place in the thing. So I got like a hundred bucks and like a little medal, but like I should have won and just like damn my heart. Cause I got to dance as hard as I possibly can. I can't do anything else. And I just, I ended up losing and I, I came in third place and, um, you know, I could have gone on to regionals and then maybe the state one. And then, you know, I was, I, I, I'd taken it so seriously, worked so hard and um and crumping was my outdoing you know uh it was honestly it was devastating because i you know, you'd spent i'd spent 
<laughs> elbows and cry. <laughs> you know, I just spent, I literally spent months practicing. I mean, I had bagged this bag thousands of times. I mean, I was, again, I was doing a blindfold and it just like, just everything went wrong. And next year, they ch every single t person, they changed out the six pack of soda because they saw what happened. And it was just like, uh, and the next year I was sitting there watching from the, from the crowd just being like, son of a bitch, <laughs> changing out those sodas. <laughs> it was terrible. So that is my story of the bag off and how at one point I was the best bag prodigy that never met, uh, that just, just flew close, too close to the sun and crumped his way uh, with, wax wings or so i don't know i'm, I'm not good at stories but anyways, that's my story as uh <laughs> at the bag off i hope the bag off still exists it was a really cool fun event and a really cool thing that nugget markets did uh and yeah so that is my time as a bagger in the bag off thank you so much for listening to this story it's a bit of a long one but there's a lot to explain um and please make sure to like and uh, share these videos and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already this is a, a little series that we just like to do um and yeah i hope you have a wonderful day and next time you see a bagger you know, you know, give them a thank you because they work really hard. They really do. Um, that's going to be it. Thanks, everybody.